And can Don Davis really start to compete against Dana White in the UFC? All right. And the reason why I brought this up, because, you know, combat sports is kind of still in a flux. You know, it's still only 27, 28 years old. You know, I don't think it's even 30 years old yet. So it's not that old. We still got a long way to go to fix a lot of things that's going on. You know, we call it a sport, but are we acting like it's a sport? You know. Hey, what's going on, Fight Fans? Hey, this is Coach D, the Wild Man, coming at you again with another episode of Coach D Media. Now, you know I do with Coach D Media. I talk about all things combat sports related from the highs to the lows. All right, let's get back into it. Today, we're going to talk about PFL versus Bellator freaking super fights and their championship series what do we think about it is it a step in the right direction and can don davis really start to compete against dana white in the ufc all right and the reason why i brought this up because you know combat sports is kind of still in a flux you know it's still only 27 28 years old you know i don't think it's even 30 years old yet so it's not that old we still got a long way to go to fix a lot of things that's going on you know we call it a sport but are we acting like it's a sport you know what i'm saying because the ufc has kind of you know had a monopoly for so long you know i think we're kind of lost the sports aspect of mixed martial arts right now i think we're getting it back you know with one championship and now PFL versus Bellator, these are the steps in the right direction, in my opinion, right? And here's why I say it. It's because every fighter are, is different. Every fighter has their own way of how they go about it, especially where they come from, right? So if you come from wrestling or you come from kickboxing or you come from boxing, you know, or, or whatever sport you come from, jujitsu, whatever, there's a certain way you were brought up. You know, you maybe you brought up with the history of the sport. So, you know, honor, dignity, respect, you know, all these accolades that you look for and how you want to conduct yourself as a combat athlete. Right. So when you get into the UFC and you want to make a name for yourself and you want to be known for being successful, you know, you got so many obstacles in your, in your way. Look at Demetrius Johnson, one of the best to ever do it. He's being considered the GOAT, arguably one of the best. Look at all the things he had to go through. He couldn't just be a great fighter. He couldn't be the fighter that submitted opponents in spectacular flashing with the flying, jumping arm bar and all the kind of things he's done, right? Because he wasn't a shit talker. He didn't go out there and run his mouth and try to discredit people and try to talk about, you know, friends and family and try to try to really, you know, get eyeballs on the sport by talk, by being negative. That's not the kind of guy he was, right? So Dana White and the UFC saying, hey, he, he's not a draw. He's not making numbers. You know, the, you know, the 25 pound division ain't all that good. We need to go ahead and get rid of it. All these things, Demetrius Johnson ended up leaving, going to the one championship and boom, bang, boom. He's a huge star all over again, right? Not that he lost being a star, but he became a success and a hold of the promotion. So it had nothing to do with who he was as a person and having to talk talk noise and talk junk and discredit a person in order to be get on great get, get great matches and be a big star. You know, say even a bigger star in a whole nother, you know, promotion, you know, across the pond in Asia. He's huge, right? So he's proven you don't have to run your mouth in order to be successful. But that's that's the UFC American brand. If you're not talking junk, you're not getting on. You're not getting a pop. You're not being recognized. You know, you're not a draw, so to speak, right? But then that takes away, you know, being able to be a great athlete and compete. You can't just compete in the UFC. They won't let you just fight, you know? How many fighters we know in the UFC that are on eight, nine, ten fight win streaks, but yet can't get a title shot? You know, can't break into the high, into the into the into the higher rankings because they're not shit talkers. They don't create drama. They don't create chaos, right? 
That's what the UFC is known for. They're going more towards the sports entertainment aspect of it and not the sport. There's more drama out there with the UFC than anywhere else, right? All these other promotions around the world, they don't go with the shit talking. They like, you know, a good back and forth. I'm going to beat you and this is how I'm going to beat you, right? But they're not all about the discredit of the fighter. You know, if you look at Chachri, that's his whole that's his whole mantra. He goes, we're not we don't want discredit. You know, we want you to rise as a martial artist, not somebody who's known for running their mouth. Do we consider Conor McGregor one of the greatest fighters or do we consider him the one that creates the most drama and creates the most stories for us to talk about? How is how is he recognized? If you went to the average person and go, who who was who's Conor McGregor? Would you say, hey, that's the guy that talks all that junk on 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 the UFC show? Or would you say, hey, he's one of the greatest fighters to ever do it? You know, that's what you're thinking, right? But now with with Don, with Don Davis and what he's doing with, with PFL and Bellator, right? We're kind of getting back to the sport of mixed martial arts, right? The PFL has their tournament style, you know, where you can win a million dollars or wherever it is if you if you if you win the, the tournament, right? They still have their stars, right? Now the Bellator is the typical, you know, combat sports style, you know, where hey, fighter versus fighter, winner take all type of situation, right? Now they're doing a super fight series where the champion of Bellator is taking on the champions of the PFL, right? It's perfect when it comes to the sports landscape that you're trying to develop, right? But here's why I say Don Davis is ready to take on Dana White in the UFC. He simply has more to offer now, okay? Think about it, right? If you're an up-and-coming fighter or your contract is up someplace else and you want to enter the market and be able to compete, look what you can now compete in, right? If your name hasn't been established yet, and you're but you're on the cuff of being good, you got a good record, you know, you got a positive record, you know, you may be 10 and 0 or 10 and 1, something like that, but you got a good record, right? You can enter the PFL tournament and win you a million dollars, right? A, that's gonna put a million dollars in your bank if you win. B, you establish yourself as a winner. You can beat multiple opponents and go, okay, hey, I'm a brand. I can, I can, I can be in the top spots. Then you may be picked up to go for a belt. Okay. Right. But what if you're out there in the open market, right? And you go, you know what? You know, this fighter I've been trying to get at for a minute, right? He's over there in PFL. He's over there in Bellator. I've been trying to fight this guy for a minute. I was stuck in the UFC, but now I'm, I'm, I'm a free agent. I want this guy. That's a possible fight. Now, now you can compete against other fighters and other in, in PFL or Bellator now where you couldn't before. Okay. And that's just being able to compete against more fighters from from different from different areas. And you're not stuck with the UFC saying, I want you to fight this guy. You don't got no say. You can't go after the guy you want to fight. Because even if he's in the rankings, you may not get to fight him. Because you may not be a big enough draw. You may not talk enough shit. You may not run your mouth enough. Okay? So therefore, you can't get it. Even though your record says you deserve to have it, that don't guarantee you're going to get it. Right. But the PFL and the, and the Bellator mix up, you might be able to. OK. Now, what if what if you got a what if you want a box? Right now, that's on the table. So all these matches we have been talking about trying to get made, but we couldn't make it because there were two separate promotions. Right. Meaning Kayla Harris versus Cyborg. That's now possible. That's on the table. OK. All they got to do is put it together. Right now, Clarissa Shields has been talking about boxing cyborg. Cyborg's been boxing. That's on the table. Right. So already that's more than what you get from the UFC. Right. So you mean to tell me with this, those things I've just mentioned, that's more, not more appealing for a fighter to go on. You know what? Let me, let me get in this market and see if I can get over there and test myself, you know, against these fighters. Now, a lot of fighters does making names. Did come from the UFC. Yeah, great. They were good fighters, period. Are you saying just because they were in the UFC, they wouldn't have been good fighters? You know? Or are you saying they washed up and the only place they can compete is the PFL and Bellator? You can go either way with that. You can go either way with that. It depends if you hate it or not. If you hate it, you're going to say it later. Right? But, but that's okay. Because the PFL and Bellator, 
They've been paying pretty decent money. There's nobody that says, hey, the PFL don't, per don't pay you shit, right? They never said Bellator don't pay you shit, right? You get to pull your own sponsors. You can make your own money, things you couldn't do in the UFC, okay? Another benefit for being part of the PFL and, and the Bellator mix-up right now. You got more opportunities to make your own money. You see what I'm saying? Right? So how how is this not a, a serious contender for the top spots now that I've said all I've said? You know, Don Davis has something that he can throw at Danny White in the UFC legitly. This, this format and what they're doing is a step in the direction that most fighters can appreciate who don't want to be the brand of shit talking and don't want to be tied up and held up in the UFC. you right. They want to have more opportunities. Francis Nagano done set the tone for what happens in 2024. Period. No matter what you want to say. Right. And then also you got freaking Conor McGregor out there with two fights left on his contract. Get ready to fight his, his next fight. And they have one fight on his contract. Right. You think he can't reinvent himself over there at PFL and, and, and Bellator and just be a fighter, popular enough to get eyeballs, be able to box, be able to box more, right? Be able to make more money. You know what I'm saying? He can he can literally reinvent himself if he chooses to, where he don't have to run his mouth as much. And I still haven't said the elephant in the room yet, right? So let's go ahead and get to the, get to the elephant in the room, right? It's not really the elephant in the room, but it's something that we have to really pay attention to, right? The PFL and Bellator and Don Davis is backed heavily by Saudi money, right? Saudi money is clearly behind this push, which means there ain't nothing you can do, right? The uh, ride hard season is coming up for Saudi Arabia. And here's a good thing that I'm proud of, right? What I do with, with Gamma, right? And we've sent fighters, right, to compete in the Rahad uh, World Combat Games not too long ago, right? Fighters that I deal with, fighters that I know, competed in the World Championships over there. So I have a connection. I didn't say I'm in there like that, but I know people who do it, and I have ways that it can get in. So I, I may be there sooner, sooner versus later, right? That's exciting. That's exciting, right? That I have a, I have a way in to see this stuff firsthand right cool in my book cool in my book so hey watch your boy he's doing something right but the bottom line with saudi money there's no there's no limit to what they can develop now are they going to push past the ufc you know overnight no the ufc had a monopoly on combat on mma for a decade almost two decades that's that's you ain't, that's not going to get past that overnight right but now, you can't hold fighters hostage no more, right? You can't say we're the only game in town no more. You can't say, hey, you're not gonna make no money, no money nowhere else. You can't say that no more, right? Right? What what leverage does, does the UFC have over your head now, right? If you're a new fighter coming up, what do they have? They can't say we're gonna pay you more than everybody else. That's that may not be true, okay? We can't say, hey, you're going to fight the best, possibly, if that's what you're looking to do. Or do you want to compete with some of the best and make, make money, have sponsorships, and be a success in combat sports? May, you might be, may not be looking for to be famous. You just want fair opportunities and let the rankings be true and not some bullshit that Dana White says, hey, we don't care about the rankings. We want you to fight this guy, okay? Or not fight at all or hold you up or keep you from fighting some of the best keep you from having other opportunities, okay? Um, Don Davis is just providing a more fairer landscape that fighters can, can appreciate. Now, am I saying everybody's going to be able to get everywhere like a freaking Francis Nagano? No, Francis Nagano has, has a one-hitter quitter, right? You can't, you can't beat that, right? He, he, he is a specimen. He's something special, right? He, he's not the average fighter, which is why he's so successful. But I don't mean you can't find your own lane and have your own success, right? You just got to be able to make it work for you. But now you have more opportunities in which to do so, right? 
with this PFL Bellator situation and their champ versus champion stuff, it's going to catch on. People are going to be more curious. And then you start throwing, hey, this is how you can get in. And they make the door available to get in. Because, you know, the UFC has the contender series and, and tough. And, and the PFL has the tournament, right? But at the end of the tournament, right, if you win, you get a million dollars. And you may still be part of PFL. With the Contender Series, if you don't win, you may not get shit. No money, no contract, no nothing. So still, there's a, still another option to be a part of PFL that the belt but UFC doesn't have. And that's just being real with it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to come out and in the UFC, even though I don't mind doing it. Right? It's just... You know, the PFL Bellator mix just may be a better product long term for the up and coming fighters moving forward in 2024. That's all I'm saying. Right. So we'll see. We'll see. It's a it's an interesting look. It's an interesting look. I told you 2024 is going to be crazy. I'm telling you that now it's going to be crazy. But we'll see. We'll see. All right, that's all I got. I'm going to throw that out there because this is the mix that I'm finding to be very interesting. And I'm going to keep on top of it because, yeah, I'm liking what I'm seeing. So that's all it. This is Coach D doing what I'm doing, calling it like I see it, talking my share of shit. To hear from me again, peace out.